It is such an honor to be up here today. Guys, I am so grateful for our pastors, Pastor Garen and Pastor Shelley. They truly see the gold in people and do their very best to bring it out. So thank you for this incredible opportunity. So we're in the middle of a series entitled Interruption or Invitation. I would love it if you could turn in your Bibles to Luke 18. We've been talking about different spiritual practices that can feel like interruptions to our busy lives, but really they are invitations from God to just be with him and find rest. It's in his presence that you find what you really need. Our key Bible verse for this series is Matthew 11:28 through 30. And I want to read it to you from the Passion Translation. Are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me, for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. (sighs) I am your oasis. I love that, because your relationship with God is not supposed to be a burden, but the very place where he lifts your burdens. Last week, Pastor Garen used the farming metaphor of being yoked together with Jesus. And in order to even be able to take up his easy yoke, we must first allow him to break off the yokes that we're currently carrying. If you came today or if you're watching online and you feel like you're under a heavy yoke, today's your day for a heavenly trade-in. So today we're gonna talk about prayer, an invitation to conversation. And in Luke 18, one through eight, Jesus tells a story about a judge, a battle, and a very persistent woman. Starting in verse one, I'm just gonna read it to you out of the New Living Translation. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about his people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman's driving me crazy. On a side note, that is some extreme (laughs) self-awareness. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Sorry, I'm asking for water. So Jesus is actually painting a picture using a technique called contrast. Using the technique of contrast to show us what God is really like. And also to create expectation in you for his inevitable answer to your prayers. This judge is unjust, ungodly, doesn't care about anyone, is annoyed by the widow's requests. This is the exact opposite of who God is. God is just and fair. He cares a great deal about you. You are his chosen one. He longs for you to just come to him. He listens to your cries and delights even in your weakest prayers. Even this judge who is nothing like God finally answered the widow's request because she never gave up. God intends to answer your prayers. So what is prayer? Let's start out with a simple definition. Prayer is conversation with God. It's divine FaceTime. 
Exodus 33, 11 says that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Jesus used the same language in John 15, 13 through 15. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. Did you catch that? Jesus has changed your status from an unworthy slave to an intimate friend. Religion can only produce hardworking slaves that are never able to rest in the Father's approval. But Jesus is offering you the ultimate upgrade into friendship. And the best part of all is that Jesus paid the price so you could get in for free. Sign me up. <laughs> all friendships start with a conversation and friendships grow through more and more conversations. Prayer is vital to your relationship with Jesus. The main point of the story in Luke 18 is this, always pray and never give up. And this is one of our core values. We always pray. You can, you can also see um, here and here, sorry, I didn't know if it was up there, that it's a two-sided conversation. We aren't the only ones talking to God. He actually has a lot of things he wants to say to you when you're actively listening for his voice. And if you wanna learn how to hear his voice, start by talking to him. Begin the conversation and always let his word be your litmus test. This book tells you exactly what his voice sounds like. So this morning I wanna share with you four important truths about prayer. And I'm gonna use an alliteration, Pastor Garen's favorite thing, because everyone knows that God anoints alliterations. So get ready for a bunch of P words. The first truth is this, problems are only precursors. Our story in Luke starts out with a problem. Widows in that day faced many problems, but this widow's biggest problem was that she battled an enemy. That is a good reminder for us today. We often focus only on what's happening in the natural realm, the circumstances or the people that, that are causing us problems. But Ephesians 6 tells us that we are immersed in a spiritual battle. Our true enemy, the devil, is battling us with carefully devised strategies and schemes. He is your biggest problem. But your problems are only the precursor to what God wants to do in your life. What is a precursor? I'm gonna be honest with you, I was just looking for another P word. <laughs> but then I read the definition. So this is so amazing, you guys. Listen to this. In biochemistry, a precursor is any chemical substance that participates in a chemical reaction that transforms it then into another, usually more active and mature compound. So what does this mean? Whatever your problem is, God is inviting you to have a conversation with him about it because he wants to create a chemical reaction through your prayers to transform your circumstances into an entirely new substance that's more active, usable, and beneficial to you. And he, and he also wants to transform you. Your problem is only the precursor. And just like the widow, it's not the end of your story. As long as you always pray and never give up. The second truth I see here is this. Persistence unlocks God's power. Did you know that there are bowls in heaven where your prayers are stored? 
I wanted to actually bring a bowl, but apparently golden bowls are all the rage, so I couldn't find any in any <laughs> store anywhere. So we have a picture for you. <laughs> Revelations 5, 6 through 8 describes a scene going on in heaven. We see the throne of God with a lamb that was slain, who is Jesus, standing in the center of the throne, surrounded by living creatures and all these elders, and they're all holding harps and golden bowls full of incense. Verse 5 tells us that the incense is actually your prayers, wow. your prayers, your prayers. Dutch Sheets in his book, my absolute favorite, Intercessory Prayer, describes these bowls and how the Bible seems to indicate that our prayers accumulate in heaven until they reach a tipping point and then God's power is finally released. We can see exactly how this happens in Revelations 8, 3 through 5. Once the bowls are full, an angel comes and pours the incense on the altar that is before the throne of God. And then the angel scoops up some of the fire from the altar where the incense was offered up. He throws it down upon the earth, causing a great manifestation of God's power. Peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and a great earthquake. This is exactly what happens to your prayers when you always pray and never give up. In the end, it was the widow's persistence that finally brought the answer. Your persistence in prayer is the key that unlocks the manifestation of God's power in your life. The third truth is this, patience is your position of trust. As you probably know, I have three amazing boys a few years ago, we threw a big, part, a big birthday party for two of them, Chase and Cole, at Candle Park in Tacoma. And um, if you've never heard of that park, it's, it's an amazing, um, huge outdoor wave pool with a couple of fun water fixtures and spray areas. And my husband and I um, started with a strategy to keep our boys safe. We split up. <laughs> I stayed with Cole while he watched the other two boys but I would frequently still like scan the pool looking for them because they didn't know how to swim and um, the place was swarming with people. At one point, I couldn't find Chase. I started to panic until I found him standing under this water fixture. <laughs> you guys see the big um, red bucket up there? That's what I'm gonna talk about. So they were just standing there, um, he was just standing there staring up at it. There were other people also um, there with him positioned under it, just looking up at it. Chase stayed there for quite some time, but I was really too preoccupied, preoccupied to figure out exactly what he was doing. But then this happened. <laughs> and I realized why he had been standing there for so long. He was patiently waiting for that bucket at the top to fill up with water. And as it filled, it slowly began to tilt until it reached its tipping point. And a gigantic wave of water poured out and showered down over all of them. They let out loud shrieks of joy, squeals of delight, because they finally had received what they were so patiently waiting for. Wouldn't it be so much easier to be patient and persistent if we could actually see our prayer bowls filling up and tipping over in heaven? But God is asking you to take a position of faith, a position of trust, just like Chase did under that water fixture, it will be well worth the wait when God's power is finally poured out on you. When I first gave my life to Jesus in high school, I came to him with a very big problem. At that time in my life, I had an eating disorder called bulimia. And it didn't just go away after I became a Christian. I actually cried out to God day and night, desperate for freedom. I didn't know I was filling a prayer bowl, but seven years went by. And then one day, my bowl finally tipped. 
God answered me and supernaturally delivered me. And it has never come back. If he did that for me, yes, that's praise to God. If he did that for me, he will certainly do it for you. Here's the last truth I want to share with you. God's ultimate purpose for prayer. Our problems are usually what motivate us to pray. And our goal, our goal in prayer is to get the answer we're, we're wanting. And he tells us to pray because he wants to answer our prayers. But God's ultimate purpose for prayer is friendship with him. That we would know him intimately, trust him completely, believe in him, that he is who he says he is, and that he'll do what he'll say he will do. When Jesus comes back, I want him to find me and say, there is my friend. She believed in me. She never stopped praying. She never gave up. Don't you want that? God doesn't cause your problems to punish you or to teach you a lesson. Even in the story, the widow's problem was caused by her enemy. God is not the author of pain or suffering, but he will take your pain and suffering, and he'll either change it, transform it, or use it to bring something better into your life. But what if he is really inviting you through your problems and trials into a conversation with him as a friend? so that you can know him more intimately? What if the injustices that you face are really an invitation from God to know him as your defender? What if your financial predicament is really just an invitation from God uh, to know him as the one who multiplies the loaves of bread and the fishes and pulls coins out of fish's mouths? What if the plaguing depression that you're experiencing is really just an invitation to know the God who wants to give you joy, to teach you how to sing and dance over your sadness. What if the addiction you're battling is an invitation to know the God who opens prison doors and sets the captives free? What if your loneliness is really an invitation to know God as a friend that sticks closer than a brother? And what if the issues that we are facing right now as a nation in 2020 are really just an invitation into a friendship and a conversation with Jesus where he takes our feeble prayers that rise as incense before his throne and mixes them with his fire and throws them down upon the nation of America, causing the greatest awakening and revival we have ever known. What's happening in our world today is not the end of the story. If we always pray and never give up. If you are here today or watching online and you can honestly say that you don't know God as your friend, or maybe you've never had a conversation with him, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to his invitation into friendship. I told you earlier that Jesus paid the ultimate price so you could get in for free. The Bible says in Colossians 1, 21 to 23, that you are actually alienated from God, far away from him. Instead of friendship, you are really his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. But now, That's the pivotal point. Listen to this. But now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. This is the good news that has been preached all over the world. If you want to put your trust in Jesus and become his friend today, He says you first must repent of your sins, agree with what God says about your sinful lifestyle and turn away from it. Then put your trust in Jesus, the lamb who was sacrificed to take away your sin. Then the very best part, start walking with him today in friendship and always pray 
and never give up. Would you pray this prayer with me? God, I am sorry for the things that I have done to separate me from you. But I believe you died on the cross for me to pay the price so I can become your friend. You, look on the hev- you took on the heavy yoke of my sin and rebellion so I can now be free to take up your yoke and find rest in you. I say yes to you, to your trade-in, my yoke for your yoke, and to the ultimate upgrade from an enemy to a friend. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me and you have put your faith in Jesus, would you let Pastor Garen know by filling out a Connect card on our website? Just check the box that says, today I decided to follow Jesus. I also want to invite you this morning into a time of prayer right now in this room or online. Are you that widow today? Are you facing a problem that is going on and on, maybe even for years? Are you battling an enemy and you just want relief? Or do you just want to know Jesus more intimately as a friend? If that's you, I would like to pray for you. At the end of the service, uh, we'll also be offering individual prayer. Uh, Our prayer team can meet you up front with their masks on to agree with you in prayer. So I just wanted to let you know about that. But um, I would like to take this moment to to pray for you. Father God, I just thank you so much for this morning, for each person in this room and who's watching online. Lord, you see, you see everything that's been going on in each person's life, in their heart, what they're battling, what they're facing, and I pray for them, God. I pray that through, um, through this word, through this, um, these scriptures, Lord, they would take heart they would find the courage to keep persevering in a place of prayer before you. I pray that you would give them strength to just keep on bringing it before you, to give them eyes of faith to see that there is a bowl in heaven being filled with their prayers. Lord, I pray that they would even see beyond that and begin to believe, God, that you have answered their prayer already. Lord, I pray for those who are facing um, physical illness, those who are facing um, emotional um, heartache and, and, and issues that are, that are bigger than them. Lord, I pray for those who are facing financial issues because of everything that's going on. Lord, I pray that you would pour out your grace on their situation, that you would bring answer and breakthrough and a manifestation of your power in their lives, that they would be encouraged and know that you hear every cry, you see every tear, and that you are with them. Lord, you are not punishing them, but you are inviting them into friendship with you in Jesus' name. And I just wanna pray one more prayer for our nation. Amen. Would you join with me in praying for America? Father, we come before you and we lift up the nation of America. Lord, I thank you that your word never fails. You said that you will um, hear our prayers and you told us to pray specifically for those who are in authority so that we may live peaceful lives in all godliness and holiness. Lord, this pleases you because you desire all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So we pray that over our nation. We pray for the leaders. We pray for um, our governor. We pray for the mayors. We pray for our president. We pray for his administration. Lord, that you would um, pour out your wisdom upon them, that you would be with them in every decision they make. Lord, as these elections are coming up quicker than we can even (laughs) imagine, Lord, we pray over them. We pray because we know, Lord, our nation is in a, in a place right now that we have never been before. And so I'm praying peace over our nation. 
I'm praying that you would break down dividing walls and that you would bring a reconciliation and a unity, Lord, that we have never seen. Lord, even though there are so there are different political parties, Lord, you are able to bring, um, bring us together again, God. And I pray you would, that we would be one nation under God, indivisible. Lord, right now we seem a little divided, but I pray you would make us indivisible because you said that when, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? So Lord, I pray for uh, unity. And I pray, Lord God, that you would place in office someone who um, is God-fearing, who will will, um, favor the church and favor Christians, but also um, be well able to lead our nation into the next four years of our country. We just pray and give these elections to you, and we pray for our great nation that you would pour your spirit out and bring revival and awakening. We pray that people would come to faith in you and come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Can we just give her a big round of applause? Amen. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for bringing that word. Thank you for blessing us. And everyone, as she was, as she was preaching, and as she, you know, that image of that bucket overflowing, I just had this sense that there are people here in this room and you don't know how full your bucket is. You just need a drop. You just need one more prayer, one more opportunity. And I encourage you after service, please come to the front and we would love to pray for you because we wanna see your bucket overflow. We wanna see those blessings of the Lord pour out on you. We wanna see sicknesses healed. We wanna see finances resolved we want to see we want to see the lord move we want to see the lord move so i encourage you to come afterwards and we'd love to pray for you and um throughout let's not let let's not let our connection end right now at the end of the service let's continue to connect for, with each other throughout the week so there's a number of ways you can do that our primary way is through our website right now so if you just throughout this week if you have a prayer request um just let us know keep on with your Bible reading plan. The thing that I love about that is that if we're all on the same page, literally, um, reading through the Bible reading plan, it's like we're reading together throughout the week. So it's a way to stay connected. Also, if you are a kid, we have Kids Church Online happening right now after the service. So if you're already on the YouTube channel, great, you're in the right place. If you're here in person, just head on to the YouTube channel and we'd love to serve you that way too. There's something else. (laughs) There's nothing else. All right. It is so good to see you this morning. (laughs) I love you guys. And I look so forward to seeing you next week. God bless.